And on the topic of education, one personality almost everyone's guaranteed to come across in school is William Shakespeare. We're all familiar with Shakespeare, but can you imagine him as a Sephardic Jewish woman? One scholar has and has assembled a theater troupe to prove it. Rebecca Honig Friedman has that story. Little is known about William Shakespeare, the actor from 17th century Stratford-upon-Avon, beyond the fact that he was the author of some of the most beloved plays and poems of the Western canon. Or was he? I believe the relationship is that Shakespeare was a play broker and he was brought in to be the front man for these plays. John um, Hudson is not the first to question whether Shakespeare was the true author of the works we've come to know as his. A great many academic works have suggested other individuals, like Francis Bacon, actually wrote the works of Shakespeare. But John Hudson is the first to suggest that Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, and all the rest were written by a Murano Jewish woman of Italian descent. Amelia Bassano Lanier, a contemporary of Shakespeare's, was the first woman in England to publish an original volume of poetry, the Salve Deus Rex Judaeorum, or Hail God, King of the Jews. She has also been widely acknowledged as a candidate for the Dark Lady who appears in Shakespeare's sonnets. But Hudson became convinced she was actually the author of those sonnets when he discovered what he considers to be anti-Christian, or Jewish, allegories in Shakespeare. His eureka moment came when he discovered a crucifixion allegory in A Midsummer Night's Dream. I said to myself, you know, this is, this is a comic crucifixion story. Um, nobody would, no believing Christian from uh, Stratford-on-Avon would write such a comic parody. Uh, it has to be written by somebody who wasn't Christian. And there was only one poet in England at the time who was a major poet, who also wrote an 1800-line crucifixion parody called Salve Deus. So it's pretty clear, really. And now Hudson is using the theatre to communicate his theories about Bassano Lanier, with a company called the Dark Lady Players and a new production, Shakespeare's anti-Christian satires, the three Virgin Mary allegories. It's really an edit of um, scenes from three of the Shakespeare plays, Romeo and Juliet, Othello, and Hamlet, because we're focusing on Juliet, Ophelia, and Desdemona as characters who are written with um, Virgin Mary characteristics. The Dark Lady player's experimental ideas coincide with experimental staging techniques, as we saw at a rehearsal of the production. We've taken that and sort of done a mirror, or what I'm calling a split screen, where one cast is performing pieces from the Shakespeare plays, and the other cast is performing pieces from some of the medieval mystery plays, quotes from right from scripture or from uh, writings about scripture that highlight um, the stories and the characteristics that are similar between the Virgin Mary and how these three uh, Shakespeare herons were constructed. Though the allegories in these scenes are based in the New Testament, Hudson argues that their satirical nature provides a window into the Murano Jewish experience. What it was like to be a Murano Jew in England in the 17th century, um, not believing Christianity and indeed mocking it, but not being able to do so explicitly, and therefore using the theater as a way of communicating that knowledge down to future generations. After these allegories ignited his theory, Hudson identified other areas in which Bassano Lanier's biography coincides with the content of Shakespeare's plays. But Hudson's unique read on the authorship of Shakespeare comes partly from a family history that starts with surviving the Holocaust. I, and for me, partly, this is a question about truth, um, my mother was a hidden child in Germany during the war, so um, I've always, you know, been very sensitive to hidden, hidden, hidden things, um, and I think this has been hidden for far too long. But when Hudson wanted to stage a production to explore his theories, he needed some help. In October of 2006, I believe, we were taking a Shakespeare class together, and he actually played Juliet <laughs> in a very early version of what you just saw. And this was the first time that he had sort of said out loud to anyone in the theater community what he was going for and what he was doing. So I was like, I have to work on this project. <laughs> this is amazing, what can I do? And he said, what can you do? And I said, well, I can stage manage. And he said, great, what's a stage manager? And so that was <laughs> the beginning of a, of a great collaboration where he does the the scholarship and I try to make it into a play. And a play needs actors. Hudson sought classically trained Shakespearean actors to collaborate with. And as it turns out, most of the actors ended up being women. Um, we've had 
many more really good women actors apply to us than, than men. We, we do actually interview men. We have had men. Um, at the moment, it's an all-women company, and it's working very well. When we found that we were, you know, had more women, we decided that it's an interesting choice and it supports the theory. And for these classically trained female actors, this new approach to Shakespeare is proving very exciting, whether or not they fully believe that Bassano Lanier is the real author. I'm convinced of the allegorical levels. It's, it's there. It's impossible to ignore it. It's almost like putting on a different pair of glasses. Once you start to see them, then any production of any Shakespeare play, even if it's the most traditionalist that you see, things start popping out at you. Yes, part of me wants to believe it, and then part of me is like, but wait a second, you know, but it's, it's just, regardless, it's just exciting and, and um, different. The fact that it might be a woman is like, ooh, yay, you know, like power, you know, so, so that's, that's fun. And this dark lady player, a Jew of Sephardic descent whose ancestors fled Spain in the 1400s, finds an additional point of connection to the Bassano Lanier theory. It just makes so much sense that all this stuff could be hidden in the text when we're people who have had to hide ourselves for so many years, so many generations. I was never very interested in authorship of the Shakespeare plays. People have said, you know, this man couldn't have written these plays, and I always said, who cares? You know, they're beautiful. But this theory, to me, is interesting. This theory, it like turns a light on. So While much of the academic world has been skeptical of Hudson's theory, he has recently received support from several respected scholars and journals. So, you know, people are d gradually doing it, but um, I can't overturn 400 years of history um, overnight. Um, I, wish I, I wish I could. You try. I try. I try. It's, it's, look, look what's happened with global warming. It's taken 40 years for that to be out. <laughs> But the Dark Lady Player's director is less concerned with convincing her audience of the Bassano Lanier theory than in getting them to think about it. I don't expect everyone to understand everything that we're doing on stage. I don't expect everyone to believe all of it. What I hope is that they'll come up to us afterwards and they'll go out for a drink later and continue to talk about it and say, this is interesting. I got to know more about this. I want them to run and Google Amelia Bassano Lanier, you know. And if enough of that Googling happens, the Dark Lady players might be playing a lot more. Reporting for the Jewish Channel, I'm Rebecca Honig Friedman.